Welcome to Hardware Asylum. In this episode, I will show you how to breathe new life into an old PC using a very simple hardware swap. <laughs> Greetings viewers, this is Dennis Garcia from Hardware Asylum, and I have a very special project I'm gonna show you. We've taken this HP Pavilion 9040N. It's a multimedia PC based on the Core 2 Quad 6600. And we'll be upgrading it to current generation hardware using an X99 motherboard an 8-core CPU with the intent of making a multimedia rendering PC. We'll be using the 8 cores from that Intel CPU and using that to just kind of chug out our video while we go and play games and do something else. This will sit in the corner and we'll just kind of have it running in the background whenever we need to do stuff. We might be able to remote in from remote desktop and start render jobs off, export audio, video, whatever we need to do. This machine will take care of that while we use our main machines for other purposes. Let's get inside this machine, take a look and see what we got. So obviously we'll be taking the side panel off and kind of showing you inside and we'll just do that right now. As with a lot of OEM PCs of this era, including the HPs, it's going to be a micro ATX motherboard and it has a lot of my, um, a lot of media PC features like some media docks and has a card reader up front, video capture card for your television. It's got an HDMI and S video video card in here. It's very low profile. Um, it's obviously been used. It's a bit dusty. Dual channel memory came standard on the Core 2 Duo or Core 2 Quad of this generation. And uh, right now it has all the memory slots populated, but that's all gonna go away really soon. So what do we have planned for this build? Well, obviously we're going to be ripping out almost everything inside this case, because we gotta make some room. First thing to go will be the motherboard. This cage might remain. And the reason I say that is because our DVD burner that's up here might get relocated down here. Along the front, we have a little drive door and it was supposed to be for an external hard drive dock. And that was an HP kind of exclusive thing. I already mentioned that we have our DVD burner up here. This slot is empty, so we might be able to also move everything down. At the very top, we have our card reader, but we might be able to replace that with an NZXT unit that has USB 3 capability. And in terms of cooling, since this is gonna be a render machine, we need to have the best cooling that we can possibly put into this case. We're not gonna be able to use any air coolers because, let's face it, this case is relatively thin. It's not going to have a lot of room for 120 millimeter cooler, which is what it requires. Heck, even on the back, we have a 92 millimeter fan. So instead, what I'm going to use is an all-in-one 140 millimeter water cooling unit. The original intent was maybe I could put the radiator here in place of this dock. However, there won't be enough room between the radiator and the fan and the hard drive rack. So I think what will happen is the radiator will go up here Unfortunately, that does bring up an issue of the power supply. Right now, this is a 300 watt. I have a feeling that would be plenty of power, although deep down I know that we really need to have more. But since I'm not gonna be running a discrete graphics card per se, it's just gonna have maybe a little Radeon, something or other, very low power. It only needs to have a video card to have the system boot. We're gonna be headless, we're gonna be contacting it over the network, so there really won't be much to see. So by using that low powered video card, we don't need to have a large power supply. All we have to have is enough power to run the CPU, motherboard, and a couple of hard drives and maybe a couple of SSDs just to kind of make things fast. For our project, we have a very unique demand on our processor. We need to have as many cores as possible and we need to have the motherboard as small as possible. So that's why when we contacted our friends over at EVGA, they suggested the X99 Micro 2. This is a micro ATX motherboard built on the X99 platform, supporting Haswell E and Broadwell E processors. That will allow us to have eight to 10 cores plus hyper-threading, and will make our rendering process extremely fast. So let's take a look inside the X99 Micro 2 box. Inside the box, we have an EVGA IO cover, EVGA branded IO shield, a couple of SATA cables, user guides, and our EVGA motherboard. Being that this is a micro ATX motherboard, we have four expansion slots, and the center slot here, which is number two, is taken over by the M.2 PCI Express SSD connection. 
LGA 2011 processor right here. And we have four memory slots for quad channel DDR4. Some important connections on this motherboard include four USB 2, four USB 3, a USB 3.1 Type-C connection, 8-channel audio, and gigabit Ethernet. This motherboard supports 10 SATA 6 connections. It has an onboard power and reset, plus a debug LED that will give us a CPU temperature once the system has booted. Be sure to check the description for links to this motherboard and also for links to the review that we have on Hardware Asylum for the X99 Classified. Hey, look what I found. This is a very old PC, but the plastic is still on it. Let's get the front bezel off this guy. To do this, you gotta take the tabs, push them back, and at that point, the panel just slides away. Some people haven't seen behind the bezel on some computers, so let's just take a quick look. There's that media bay I was talking about. And our DVD burner with light scribe, very HP. Now that we've gotten all the hardware out of this HP Pavilion chassis, we can start looking and see what we found. First of all, and this isn't uncommon to OEM cases, we have different style plugs to activate the motherboard. We have power and reset, a couple of LEDs, and these will all have to be adapted so that they will run on our EVGA X99 motherboard. The case itself, very traditional. I mean, if you remove the top panel, it's very square but it's also a bit of a unibody in that the back is riveted in place. So if we need to do any modifications on this side, we'll have to remove the top and the side at the same time. Inside the case, very traditional. Obviously, it's very open now that all of the gear has been removed. We'll be able to retain the hard drive mounting bracket here, and we'll probably have to remove this upper cage so that our cooling system will fit. And then we'll be breaking out the Dremel to cut some access holes into the top. All right, it's time to get to work. We're gonna be using our cordless drill and the very important 7 64th inch drill bit. This drill bit is really important because you can drill out the aluminum rivets and leave the case material alone. You might get a little bit of residual, you just kind of knock that off, but that allows you to snap the case back together using eighth inch aluminum rivets. All right, so it turns out that I had to remove uh, quite a few more rivets because the external five and a quarter bay had to slide forward, in which case this panel is in the way. Basically, all the rivets are out, so this case should really just come apart. I had to remove this piece to get the drive bay out. 
I removed all the rivets there. This piece is now separated. And this one should come off. Voila! No more cage. Actually, now that it's apart, I should be able to cut the blowhole for the radiator fan uh, quite easily without having to be inside the case. And um, if we were actually painting this is all apart, we could paint the whole thing. For our mod to work, we're going to have to make a, a few adjustments to the chassis. The first one will be adjusting this cage to allow for the radiator and fan to fit. I still want to use a card reader, and I have this NZXT unit here that I believe will work great. It, although it does need a bay, a five and a quarter bay to, to operate. The nice thing is that the inside of it is pretty shallow, so the fan will fit in here and will allow for it to operate and for me to install it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a Dremel tool and basically just lop these two pieces off. We need about three inches of clearance from the top of the case to the bottom of the fan to make this work. For that we will be using some reinforced Dremel cutoff wheels. These are great because they last a long time and they're really strong. Reassembling the case is just like taking it apart. We're going to start with our drive cage and slide that into place. Give it a snap to go in there. At that point, it will be lined up here. The next step is to put our front panel on and we will snap some rivets back into it to hold it in place. Since we have cables going through here, we just need to make sure that they all are routable. There we have it. Turn it on in, put a couple of rivets in, and we'll be good. First rivet we'll stall is in the back. And we'll just do the rest. The next step is determine where we want to have the fan hole for our radiator. As you remember, we're rocking the 140 millimeter Cooler Master fan, which will fit in the uh, area at the top of the case. So what we'd like to do is put the fan right there. And if we install that on the top, that will kind of give us a rough location of where the fan can go. to cheat a little bit and since this fan has uh, a lot of space between the fan blades I'm just going to drop a couple screws in here to line it up into the center maybe all of them I'll hold it in place take a sharp pointed 
metal object, in this case a screw. Scratch the paint down the edge of the fan. And if that all worked well, we have a rough outline to cut with. I'm using the Dremel and I installed the shell back inside. It's not riveted down, but I did that mostly for stability. So I have something to push on as I'm cutting. So let's get to cutting. Well, that concludes the mods that we need to do to this HP Pavilion to get our new hardware to fit in here. Just to recap, what we did was remove a bit of the external five and a quarter bay, which we had to disassemble the entire case to make that happen. That will give us room for our 140 millimeter Cooler Master fan and radiator to fit up here. I also took a bit of a Dremel action and cut a hole out in the top the traditional blowhole in the old case modding days. So now all I need to do is clean up this case, get some of the metal flakes out so that we can install our hardware. I'll have to rivet the whole thing back together so that we have an actual chassis to work from. And in the next episode, we will be installing the hardware, hooking up the wiring and firing this baby up.